maybe should we get started just on some intros, um, knowing that uh, Julia and Lolita aren't here yet and that we are being recorded by Orca Media. So not like too, too deep, but just, you know, a little bit more to get to introduce ourselves to Jeremy. And we'll hold on a few minutes to have Jeremy introduce himself just in case Julia and Lolita can join. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm Shay I can start. I'm Shayna. <laughs> I share pronouns. I live on Kent Street um, up by the College of Fine Arts. I um, do community organizing work for my job. So I work with Community Action Works, which is I'm logged in on my work account here. And I um, work with community groups fighting pollution threats in their neighborhoods and facilitate a national coalition of grassroots groups fighting um, PFAS contamination in their communities. And um, I, yeah, have been doing a lot of stress baking, probably could be doing more stress baking. So it's all, it all evens out in the wash, you know? So it's been good. <laughs> um, I'll hand it to Michael, who's unmuted. Hi, um, I'm Michael Sherman. Uh, I live um, also near the Vermont College, up on College Hill. Um, I've been a resident here about over 30 years. Uh, I was, uh, I was the former director of the Vermont Historical Society. I taught at the Vermont College uh, before it became the College of Fine Arts in the adult degree program. Um, I've been a baker at the Mangy's Bakery. I'm now currently the editor of Vermont History, the journal of the Vermont Historical Society. What else am I supposed to say? Um, <laughs> just got appointed to the Police Review uh, Committee. As, oh, hey, I didn't really think of that. Uh, there you go. As, as the, uh, and I made a point of saying that I was um, on the, on this committee and that we hadn't made us, and that I was not speaking for the committee, but, but was going to be our reporting, kind of a liaison to the committee. Um, I think that's all I need to say. <laughs> Welcome, Jeremy. I'm glad you're, glad you're with us. I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I'm the staff liaison for this committee. Um, I am the assistant city manager and um, sort of help uh, guide the work that needs to be done on the city side for this committee. I can go next if it is okay with Lauren. Uh, I'm Pilin Kohn and welcome to Jeremy. Um, I work for Norwich University. My job has recently changed. Now I am full-time lecturer for Norwich University and also leadership. Exciting. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I am so happy because I was working part-time before and now I am full-time and also I am uh, the leadership program coordinator, which is really, you know, what's my PhD about and my all professional, you know, experience. So I know 2020 is not good for most of the people, but it was good for me, at least with the, you know, job part. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like too happy, but I'm glad. And I moved here three years ago from Turkey. I'm originally Turkish. And it is hard to believe that three year passed. The time passes really quickly. When you count the winter and cold, windy days, it is not very quick, but when you look at generally, yeah, we are in our fourth year uh, living in Montpelier and we are very happy. And I'm very happy being part of this committee too. And I can introduce myself, I'm Lauren Hurl and um, I am the, the city council representative. Um, so I'm from district one, I live up on Deerfield Drive. Um, so I've been on council just for a year and a half, I guess, and have been on this committee uh, since I joined council. Um, and in my day job, I run a, a advocacy group for Mont Conservation Voters. So do a lot of environmental advocacy and some electoral work. So I've been really busy <laughs> this fall. Um, and got two uh, kids at Union Elementary and I'm really excited by what's coming up with this group. So, so grateful that you're all here and welcome Jeremy. Great. So yes, I think Janelle and Lalifa are joining late. I'm not sure I haven't heard back from Julia yet. So why, do you mind introducing yourself? Sure, well, um, well, it's great to be here. It's nice to meet all of you. 
uh, and I, I look forward to getting to know you better over the course of the committee's work. Um, so yeah, my name is Jeremy Beaudry. Uh, you he, him pronouns. Um, live up on Elm Street, just about right across from the North Branch Nature Center. Um, here with me in my home are my partner and our three children um, who are ages five, nine, and 11. Um, they do not go to school. They're unschooled. Um, so that means we haven't seen a huge change on the surface with uh, you know the pandemic restrictions around schooling. Um, but of course, they're impacted pretty deeply and not being able to do the things they normally do with their, their friend groups. Um, so I, I work for the University of Vermont Medical Center. Um, and I, I work for a design and innovation lab that's embedded uh, in the, the health network. Um, by profession, I'm what's called a, an experience or a service designer. Um, and basically the work that we try and do at, at the, the UVM Health Network is to transform healthcare services uh, for the better for patients and providers and caregivers, um, any number of folks who kind of come together to make healthcare what it is. Um, been working remotely. Um, like many folks now since March of this year. Um, feel very privileged that I am able to work remotely and, and stay safe um, doing so in my home. So um, we're, we're hunkered down like a lot of folks, but um, doing well. Um, fairly new to Vermont myself, uh, moved up here in 2015 from Philadelphia um, because of the, the job change that I made. Uh, previously was an academic, was running and teaching in a grad design program in Philadelphia. Um, so Vermont is still a very strange <laughs> and place for me, uh, although we like it quite a bit. Um, we feel grateful to be here, grateful to be in Montpelier. Um, I think originally didn't think we would live so far outside of Burlington where I work, but um, Montpelier has made all the difference in terms of us finding a community of people and feeling settled and um, really just uh, loving being here. Um, so I think I, I can just be brief with that. Um, I would say I would love to schedule time with each of you individually um, over the next few weeks just to get to know you all better and, and also really to learn about your experience on the committee um, just so I can kind of help learn more about the work and, and get up to speed and, and figure out how I can be of service. Um, so thank you again, and it's great to meet you all. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, and sorry we didn't get a check-in beforehand. It's just, you know, it's been, it's, been, it's been a week, it's been a month, it's been a year. Here's where we're at. So, okay. Um, so I'll just kind of dive us in. So on our agenda, yeah, we've got introductions, and then, um, yeah, public comment, which I don't think there is any. Um, we'll review and approve the minutes from our last meeting and that will hopefully get a little bit up to speed for Jeremy. And then our issue check-ins we wanna do are checking about our outreach um, and what's been going on there, um, our fundraising check-in and creative discourses work plan. That's our, um, our what's it called? Our consultants, oh my God. Um, <laughs> work plan check-in and then other business, which I think Michael, I'd love to hear about um, any update on the police commission, if there's anything more than what you just shared. Maybe who else is on it and things like that. I haven't seen that. Um, and then we'll, yeah, just set our agenda for our next meeting and then review action items. Um, and I guess my only other thing about uh, other businesses, do we want to have a conversation about potentially moving this time? Um, just, just knowing, Lauren, you said it's been really hard for you. Um, and uh, did someone else say that this time doesn't normally work too? Or did I, think, I, think, uh, I, I think Julia was concerned about the time. The last I know Julia, time. yeah, Julia can't make today, but so yeah, so maybe we should have that converse, put that on the agenda for next time. Well, she made she, didn't she say oh. she was going to split her time between the the, the board the board of education's discussion of the the SOR um, that's what's happening today. Okay. and and coming here so we may see her hear her okay 
So maybe, um, maybe we'll see here. That's exciting. That's exciting that that's happening tonight. Um, but maybe we can just have that discussion by email because that should be fine to do by email. Um, so can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. Michael moves. Helen, do you want a second? Yeah, I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, we've got our agenda. So um, seeing no public comment, if folks want to pull up the email that um, Michael sent. And if it's helpful, I can also show it on my screen, but I always think it's a little bit easier just to. Oh my gosh, but if this, I can is the, find the, it. this is the minutes you're talking about, right? The minutes, yeah. Okay. And then Michael, actually, do you mind just walking us through the minutes um, just to kind of catch Lauren and Jeremy back up? Okay, so with the usual stuff, um, the the update with um, with the creative discourse, um, Keisha did most. I guess Keisha and Tabitha were with this, um, and they will be the people we're in touch with most. Susan McCormick is going to be mostly involved with working with the the Montpelier Roxbury School District, um, and but she'll be available mostly to Keisha and Tabitha, but sometimes to us to check in and answer. And I guess also, I think there was something about get, getting information to us about what's going on with the school district as, as they, that develops. Because um, Creative Design, this course also has the contract to work with the, with the school district. Um, so they will, um, they're ready to start. Um, in December, when they're not ready, but they're planning to start in December um, and have the, 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 they've identified 10 different groups, um, uh, constituency focus groups, and they'll run those conversations through February, um, either on Zoom or some other platform. Um, they will, um, they'll prepare a survey. As a result of that, they'll prepare a survey that, that we have yet, yet to talk about how that's going to be distributed. Uh, but the idea is to have it go out widely in the community. Um, and and uh, as they get the results of that, from that and from the, this, from the community conversations, they will prepare a report, a summary report of what we are now thinking of as phase one that will come to us and to the city council and I assume will be widely available also in the committee. Um, so we, dis we discussed then the composition of those um, little focus groups and, and they were gonna make some revisions based on that. Um, so our job is mostly responsibility for outreach, including helping them, the, the CD folks identify individuals for each of the team groups, publicity, securing additional funding. Um, and I just found another typo in my minutes, okay. Fund, funding for uh, for those group meetings, um, designing, distributing, analyzing the survey, preparing, distributing, and reporting the summary of findings. We are also re we are responsible for the fundraising as well as the outreach. And so we have, uh, as of the last meeting, um, Shana and Palin reported that they had submitted. Uh, grant applications to the Vermont Community Foundation Spark Grant and Ben and Jerry's Foundation's Community Action Team Grant. Um, Janelle and I are supposed to research uh, and contact, uh, there were two specific ones mentioned, cooperative development and local initiative support co corporations, and I'll report on that later. Um, and Shana was going to contact the Montpelier Alive, and I guess Dan Groberg to discuss their small grant program. Um, Contributions from individuals, we are starting to gear up on that. Um, we, the first round, we had, the first part we had sent, we had uh, suggested people send com uh, contributions to the Montpelier Foundation. That turned out to be not a good idea. Um, and so now they're going directly to the city and um, with CJAC in the memo line and we'll go, the money will go directly onto our line, uh, line, line in the city budget. Um, 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 what else? Oh, we have yet to figure out how we're going to thank people for that. Um, and I think that, I think that we'll report back on that in just a yeah, minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then other outreach and then some, we're, we have a, we have a mailing list 
we're developing a mailing list. Uh, several people have signed up. Um, the committee was encouraged to recruit others. Um, other business, um, I reported that I had submitted an application for appointment to the police review committee um, and explained in there in the, it, that I would not be voting, speaking for us, but, but be a liaison. Um, and uh, that we were still recruiting new board members and welcome, Jeremy, you responded. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and so we're all, we are all on the alert to keep, you know, to keep our eyes out and ears open for other possible new members. And then next, the next meetings were announced for November 5th today, November 19th, December 3rd, so far to be at 5.30 PM and then what the agenda topics for our current is. So that's the, that's, that's the minutes, if you didn't get a chance to read them. Thank you, yeah. And then does anyone have any questions about what's going on? I'm sure there's probably a lot, but any specific things? Okay, then, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I had a quick question about, um, donations. Is there a way for folks to donate uh, online? Yeah, we haven't set up like an official account. I've just been collecting online donations through PayPal. Um, mm -hmm. And then just, you know, right, keeping track of that and then writing a check, which I actually have not done yet. So I do need to do that. Okay. On my to list actually forget today, pay a lot of things today and did not do that one. So but that's just, yeah, through paypal.me slash Shana Casper. Steve, because I'm the only one. But yeah, I can send that around, around again too. Perfect. Um, So can I get a motion to approve the minutes? We do it again, Michael, can you make a motion to approve? Well, since I wrote them, I shouldn't be the one to make oh, them. Oh, that's right. All right, well, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Helen, do you want a second? I second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. I guess all three of us, aye, <laughs> any opposed? Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so outreach check-ins. This is to those 10 group members, which in writing up the notes from the last, um, or writing up my email for, like to, to prep for this, the, with the notes from our last meeting and, and to prep for this one, realized that we still haven't, we don't have them. Um, what, what are those 10 groups that um, Creative Discourses is looking for so i don't know cameron if you um, I, do, I, I have or do you have them in the yes. notes no not not in, in my oh, okay. notes i do but not not in the minutes because i thought Great. that was not appropriate probably a little too minutes. specific yeah um so maybe so, it's not appropriate for right here then too but <laughs> well no i think it's okay, okay. I mean, I, um because there was some question about whether they were going to be changed at all and um we, right. didn't, have to, we didn't have to take a vote on that so right. i didn't go make it into the minutes but as it was originally proposed, one was um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color um, it was group one. Um, and that, I think, was meant to be just internal on city government staff and elected and appointed. Is, is that correct, Cameron? Um, my list, uh, you can hear me, right? I'm sorry, these are new yeah. headphones. OK, yeah. great. Um, my list for who I was supposed to contact, which is just the staff, um, is a they wanted to include folks that had a connection to the public. So a lot of our front facing staff, they wanted me to identify the um, uh, folks who identify as people of color that work for us. They want to talk to them privately, not a, not a big meeting. And then they wanted to include a separate group of um, HR, police and finance, that like, like kind of, they said that was important. So this is on our staff agenda to talk about on Monday. So. Um, cool. I will follow up with y'all on who has stepped forward for that by our next meeting. So, so that's groups one and two, um, because as, as what you're talking about, the city employees in general, mm -hmm. and then the, specifically um, uh, the the, the um, Black, Indigenous, and and people of color, right? Um, and then the, the group three was the the police department and we did talk about whether the fire where the fire department goes in, in all that um and then group four is leaders of community-led organizations um group five is 
Black, Indigenous, and people of color residents of, of Montpelier, so not, uh, outside of the city employees. Um, group six is the LGBTQ residents in of the committee of the community. Uh, group seven is people with disabilities. Group eight is young people. Young not having been defined. <laughs> um, group nine is people experience financial stress, um, precarious housing, things like and things like that. People in, at risk, I suppose. And then group ten is leaders of community service organizations, and that's distinct from the leaders of community-led organizations. Oh, there's Julia. Hi, Julia. Um, so that's the that's the ten groups that we discussed uh, with the question about where the fire department goes um, still remaining. And I didn't see that um, addressed in their their plan, but their their revised plan didn't really talk about these groups at all. So they did say that they would help us identify them, right? The members of them, they're not gonna- right, like well, Yes, and right, we're okay. supposed to, and we're supposed to help them identify them as well. Um, but they didn't, they didn't uh, elaborate on, um, on those 10 nor did they address the question about the fire department emergency. I'm gonna system. ask them on Monday, see what okay. the chief feels like. Okay, so, so that's that's the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you guys brought up a good point last time, just to pontificate for a second about like, you know, they do interact with the public in a pretty intimate way. And so yeah. it would make sense that they were included. Yeah, and I think we should, well, the fire department would include the emergency of the EMS people. Yes, they're one and the same. Yes, right. Okay. So I can jump in. Um, yeah, I just had some calls with VCIL later in the week, the Vermont Center for Independent Living, um, the last time we met and set up a call with some folks for the next Saturday, which was a no show. Um, and so got set up again for this week. So we'll see um, for, for, no, no, not this Saturday, the Saturday after this Saturday. So we will, we'll see how it goes. Um, but that's, so I haven't actually met with anyone from VCIL yet. Um. So. I can report, and I think I did report that I had a conversation with Joan Duval, uh, Joan Javier Duval, who's the minister at the Unitarian Church and who is on the board of um, Justice for All, the, the, the Burlington group, and she is interested in um, she's interested in being part of uh, the group of community-led organizations, and um, I, I recommend that we um, we put her on the list. She's been very active over the past several years from since she came here in dealing with uh, issues about uh, racial discrimination and so from and she herself is from a family from that from the, originally from the Philippines. So and Julia, yeah, we're just doing report backs of our of our community outreach over the past so two weeks. Are we going to take votes on? Uh, on admitting people, or how is this going to work, Shana? On admitting people. Well, I mean, I mean, sending names forward to um, to uh, oh. uh, creative discourse. What happens with this list of people that we recommend or who agree to do this? I think it's we're just snowballing here, right? And that's what I, my understanding was. So we're coming up with our list, and we'll and they're coming up with their list of you know of folks too, and they'll then reach out to other folk, you know, have conversations with them and reach out to other folks. I don't think it's a official like focus group type of thing. Was my understanding? I don't think we need to vote okay. on passing these names along. Does anyone want to question that? So I think I would say only if like if we end up referring too many people to them, we can get into those conversations. If they say this is too big a group, you got to narrow it down, then we can maybe have those conversations. But they haven't given us any indication of what the size of that group is going to be, have they? I think so it would be a good problem those. to have to have too many people. <laughs> yeah. That bridge when we go to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can share an update, which is that I've reached out to three people who I think all would be um, good 
people to have included um, either in the um, in the focus group of BIPOC folks um, or uh, I can't remember if there was like one for informal community leaders or if that were slicing or dicing yeah. that. Um, yeah. But they're all people that are um, engaging in activism within the community that I've worked closely with. Um, Amanda Garces, uh, Beth Nolan, and um, Kaya Santana. Um, could, you, could you send you either spell them out or send me the list so I can get them in the in the minutes? Yeah, I can, how about I how about I I'll put it in the chat um, after okay. I talk. Um, okay. uh, none of them are, I mean, I don't actually, you know what, I don't want that in the minutes yet, just yet, Michael, actually, because they're just our names in particular, um, cause none of them have said yes, definitely. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I realize work is here. So I, I, I should I rewind if I could. So sorry, those three, uh, um, they've all, none of, none, none of them, uh, uh, I haven't spoken directly like in person to any of them. It was all electronic so far. Um, it, it wasn't like a cheering yes <laughs> for many of them mm -hmm. so far. Um, and so I, I'm going to have to sort of talk a little further with them about um, what what are the, I, I really want to know like what, if there are reservations, what they are. Um, I want to know um, if, there are barriers, what they are. I have a feeling there's, I, like I get the sense that it's a little bit more on the level of reservations than barriers. Um, and so um, I'm gonna dig deeper into that, but that's where that's what I'm working on. And I just wanna say hi, Jeremy. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, sorry, there we go. <laughs> Julia, we did a, a good round of intros at the beginning. Do you wanna, do you sorry, wanna I missed introduce that. yourself? No. Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm Julia Schaefitz. I've been on the um, committee since it started in 2018, August 2018, I think that was. Um, uh, I'm also a parent of a uh, says almost seven year old who goes to the country. And uh, I'm a therapist, and so I'm a social worker in private practice, um, and um, have been getting involved in some and a lot of efforts related to the schools, um, like the, um, and, and really like building equity into the school, especially at the parents group level, um, and also looking into the SRO um, issue as a result of just hearing from, he, well, hearing from clients of mine, as well as like friends of mine who are experiencing difficulties, so. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, Julia. Um, and I, I said to the others, I'm hoping to find some time just to chat with people one-on-one, -on -one just to learn more about your experience. Um, and I, I know of you because my partner is Meredith Warner, oh, who has been doing hi. a lot of work Yay. with the SRO stuff. So yeah. Oh, great. That's right. <laughs> um, now I'm like, the, thank you for mentioning that because yeah. now it all comes together for me. <laughs> I'll look forward to, to speaking with you, meeting with you. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm, and this is also just, yeah, making me think um, that perhaps for if we get like an enthusiastic, yeah, someone wants to, you know, participate just to like send them in an email to Julia and me, because we're going to be the ones doing that interfacing directly with Keisha. Um, and so then that way we don't have to like go through our whole list each week, essentially, you know, Um and, and then that way it's not like recorded of being like, oh, we had this really hard cover, you know, like I'm not sure how much of that needs to be on the public record on Orca. Um, but do, do, does anyone want to like have, um, you know, other like relationships or, or, you know, folks that they want to be reaching out to right now? Is there a gap um, where, uh, where we want to, um, you know, make sure that someone's covering it. Cause I feel like that's kind of what I did with like BCIL is like, oh, I don't know if there's anyone in our group that like has talked about working in like the disability community before. And so I was like, I want to like, I want to do that, you know? Um, and so it's kind of like why I reached out. But if there's um, like other, yeah, young people, um, people experiencing housing, leaders of community service organizations, LGBTQ community members, um, and yeah, if there's, those are just people we haven't 
explicitly said that we're having meetings with folks yet. Um, but otherwise, I think like we're all just going to continue doing the outreach and like hold each other accountable. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have a question. Um, these particular individuals um, that you've been discussing, are these folks who can then help create a discourse, start to build their participant list for the focus groups? So they're like yeah. points of contact for different kind of populations within Montpelier. Oh. So the first Hello. phase is of having, yeah, we can hear you, Michael, can you hear us? Um, okay, some, um, I'm having trouble getting my, making my computer stay connected. I'm gonna have to call in as I did last time. Um, but uh, give me a phone number quickly. <laughs> it is, um, oh shoot, hold on. I, I, Sorry, I, Michael, I have I to pull it up it. on my computer. Just write it up I and put, put it in it. front so I can. I'm, I'm trying. I'm sorry. Okay. It's not a fast Here, process. I'll, I'll put it in the chat, Michael. Yeah, did you get it before I did? I think I've got it. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why this is happening. It happened earlier today. Oh, there it is. Totally um, so the second number yeah. is the meeting ID. Okay. So Shana, I can reach out to um, the Homelessness Youth Program and uh, the Basement Teen Center, work closely with them. So I'll reach out for them by next meeting. Oh, sorry, the Homelessness Teen Center and the which one? Uh, so the basement, the basement Teen Center, there's a teen center in the basement of City Hall. Yep. They're just called and the Basement Teen Center and the uh, sort of state's Homeless Youth Program. Great. Awesome. I can also reach out to, I think I'll reach out to, um, I have a friend who's a guidance counselor at Montpelier High School, um, see if she's got any young people that might be interested, high school students, um, and also uh, the um, RJA, uh, Racial Justice Alliance at the high school as well. Uh, do we, would we, I wonder about like, is, are, like, would we want any like um, school staff, like, you know, like, are, I, are, would that be like some, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like. Well, no, and this is, this, so about. let me, I can, let me go back and I'll answer Jeremy's question and then go to, the, yeah. yeah, so we're, we're doing um, a series of focus groups with these 10 community groups to kind of where where creative discourse is going to like ask a series of questions and try to pull out what are the key topics of conversation as a full city and then have bring together folks from those um from those focus groups and probably other community members as well um and potentially open it up to like the public at large for like a summit um and then potentially from there a series of like a, of ongoing conversations with a smaller group of like cross sector, um, right? But these kind of like identity based groups or our, um, you know, key marginalized community groups in particular, you know, having conversations there first to be able to identify like what are the key points of, of tension or of concern to dig in on um, moving forward. And so why, and then so simultaneously, Creative Discourses has also been hired by the Montpelier Roxbury School District to be doing a similar type of equity analysis with the school. Um, and so I think because of that, we I don't think we need to reach out to the you know, teachers and like superintendents and, and stuff like that. Um, and PTA, but I'm I I that's my understanding. Does that sound right? Yeah, and, and they're starting to build, they're building relationships there. So they might know, they might know if there's yep. someone who's appropriate to pull in. Um, as well. And the, the reason I was late is that I was at their first meeting yeah. that they were facilitating about the um, school safety um, stuff. So uh, yeah. Also yeah. just this job. is <laughs> this is a small community and the people that um, might be interested in this are going to overlap anyway. So I think I think you'll find that. It's all the same people doing all the things. <laughs> There's a very small pool. <laughs> Lolita's here. Yeah. Hi, Hi. Lolita. 
Um, do you, welcome. Do you want to um, say hi and settle in and, and introduce yourself to our new member, Jeremy, here? Oh, uh, Hello. hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lalita Malwaganam. I live in Montpellier, Vermont. Um, I've been in the community since, what, two, three years? I'm not sure. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Jeremy's our newest member, and we're going to try to um, set Jeremy up with, yeah, one-to-ones with all the members. It'll be great. Cool. Um, and then, Lolita, we are just going through all of the people, all of, like, the focus group folks that we are going to do outreach for, for creative discourses, to be able to have the focus groups. Oh, okay. um, and so, if, yeah, if you've had any of these conversations, have any people who are, like, awesome, we're ready to go feel free to email them to mm -hmm. Julia and me, or if there's any like organizations that you want to reach out to, um, would love to, you know, divide and conquer here. Um, but otherwise, yeah, anything else to say on this outreach? Oh, newsletter, that is the other thing. Anything else about um, reporting back on meetings with community leaders or organizations? Cool. So uh, the new, oops, Michael, uh, you back? I can't even get a telephone connection. <laughs> Is there some other way to? I mean, you 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 sort of drop. I lose you and then sort of come back. But the, the telephone is not working. Um, so I'll just I'll do my best to keep up with you. But um, oh no, it's all right. That's so weird. Yes. Um. Totally, totally un unexplainable. All right, so keep going, I'm sorry. Well, no, um, I, yeah, I don't, I, I guess the only other solution that I can offer is what I've done sometimes before is like, you call me and I put you on speakerphone and like hold you up next to the camera. But if your phone's not working, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. I'm, so. I'm only hearing fragments of what you're saying. Um, so if, if there's another telephone number that you, that you know I can use, um, yeah, there's another one. Let me pull up the call list again. You can call from this number. Try this one. Hold on. Do you see the one that Cameron just put in the chat? Michael? What? You can... you can also try that one. All right, I'll try that one. Thank you, Cameron. Um, so the only other thing too is the newsletter check-in. Um, Michael is the one who had emailed me that he had heard back from some folks saying, "What? Like, why is this e newsletter like coming from Action Network? Like, that's weird." Um, and so I don't think that there was like a solution offered here, but like just to name that we're we're sending people to this like third-party site in order to keep you know, track of everyone who gets the newsletter, how many people open it, if people like click any links in it, all of that type of stuff that it's like a, a party that can do that. Um, but, and they can do it for free and everything else. But does, has anyone else been hearing any of these concerns? Should we move it to just like an email spreadsheet that we can BCC? I just, I feel like I feel more comfortable being on an email list where there's like an unsubscribe button at the bottom. Um, but I don't know if anyone else had concerns. Yay, you're back, Michael. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I would just say I saw that and thought it was spam and didn't do it. And so I don't know if it discourages some people from, I'm like, I'm not signing up for one more list. I'm literally on yeah. this committee. <laughs> so there, I mean, you might scare off some people from having to subscribe to something that they don't know what they're signing up for, but I see the advantages of doing it that way too. And another option, if that's like, so um, if it, it doesn't let you, it doesn't let you change who, who it's from, if it's from Action Network. I thought I set it up. So it, it's, I guess it says it's from me, from Shana and the Montpelier Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee, but the email is like through Action Network. Got it is I guess how it works. Well, yeah. and it was like, I don't, I mean, I assume you all saw it. Like, I mean, it comes in, it's like all designed in a way that Formatted. it looks like a 
I'm, it doesn't look like a like a regular email from us that just happens to be managed through a program. It looks like a kind of spammy email, I thought. But <laughs> okay. So hearing this from Lauren and from Michael, maybe like would did it make sense to if we have people sign up and then before I send the newsletter update, like just download the email list and just send it out in a BCC? Is that the way to do this or um another any other ideas of solutions? Another option I've used MailChimp a bit recently and um oh you said they sell your data though right yeah i'm yeah not a huge fan of mailchimp because yeah. they okay because that one it looks like it comes from you like yeah right but that's a bummer um i looked at uh, the um the home page for the action network and they and they can you hear me yep okay um and they say that they 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 promise not to ch share um, the mail the mailing list. Um, so uh, this all came about because I was I tried out on a few a few people um, a sample letter that I was going to send out more widely, and one of them went ahead and signed up and was surprised to get this thing from the Action Network. So I revised my invitation letter to say that they were working. Um, and I haven't set it out yet. Working as a uh, under a contract or an agreement with the city, which word should I use, Cameron? Definitely not a contract. You can say you're, you know, you are a committee, a city committee working, you know. Okay, uh, and, and, but but the action, but the 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 um the action network is just an arrangement with us. It's not. It's not any formal arrangement with the city. No, no, it's just an online service that manages your uh, mailing list. So you right. can just say, you know, we're using Action Network to manage our newsletter. Okay. Um, that's sort of what I had, it said in my second draft, but um, I will, I will um, put that into my final version. Well, and again, our goal here was just to keep people updated, recruit people to be part of these focus groups and for the work later on, recruit people to donate, all, you know, keep people informed about this work. Um, and so I think we have this goal of doing it like every two weeks. So for the next one, probably this weekend, I'll just download the list and send it out at the BCC. So it'll come from me, they'll be able to reply to me. Um, I think that makes sense. Does that sound good to folks? How many people are on the list right now? Like, we're getting close to 40. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Look, that's more than showed up to your information sessions. Yes. Things are growing. Like you said earlier, snowballing. And that's the important part. Couldn't have gotten it much smaller and still exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that moves us along nicely to our fundraising check-in. So as we said, Pellet, let's, let's do a high five through the internet. Woo, we got our first grant in, yeah. And Lolita, we're gonna get another grant in in January, right? right. High five, yeah. woo, no, it's not working, okay. Yeah, okay, um, so we're getting some grant in, grants in, which is great, haven't heard back from any and probably won't hear back from them for a while. Um, I think it was Julia and Michael were going to do some research on some other grants for, for funding this work. There's one yeah. want to um, about that. So the co-op, the uh, cooperative, cooperative, um, whatever that was, that was really just for co-ops so not for us. And the other one, the initiative is not, we're not eligible because we're not a 501c3, the agency. So, um, and the AJ Musty uh, Foundation, which looks very promising, they're not accepting any grants from um, for a while, and it looks like we didn't, we don't qualify in any case because we get some city funding. So uh, I'll just keep going through that list that I that I assembled, and um, I, I sent that information to Janelle. She has that big thick volume that I use, and uh, we'll keep mining. The lists that I put together and any that she comes up with, and if we find one that looks promising, we'll 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 put together a grant proposal. But so far, um, haven't found anything that uh, we're qualified for under under their guidelines. Oh, there was the Thompson Foundation, which 
is in Brattleboro, but they only make grants to Wyndham County and and Dutchess County, New York. So go figure. I don't know. Um, and sorry, and you said initiatives was that for us because we're not a C three. I do. I think we are a C three through the city, right? Because the city of Montpelier is not city of Montpelier is not a C three. I, I texted not, with no. friend and she said no. Okay. Cool. Sometimes those we have been we as the city some of our other committees have been successful in just giving those groups a phone call. Sometimes they'll waive that requirement because you are a sort of an unfunded branch of a municipality and a municipality is technically a not for profit. So, but we don't have the same um, like tax clearance. It's not the same. We're a different okay. sort of entity under tax law. So sometimes they'll be willing to change the rules. For be, especially these smaller foundations might uh, mm -hmm. bend a little bit, um, but it's up to you to determine if it's worth a phone call. Any other um, fundraising updates, check ins, ideas? I uh, dropped the ball. I haven't reached out to people I was going to reach out to this past, these past few weeks. I, uh, I looked at the Awesome Foundation. I think it's kind of a long shot, but it's a pretty easy application. So I'm just gonna submit it. <laughs> um, it's basically like, tell us your awesome idea. <laughs> and then there's like local chapters and the closest local chapter is in Boston. So I have to like figure out how to pitch it as an awesome idea. Like, I don't know, just like fit to fit the vibe, but I'll try it. <laughs> We've hired um, consultants. It's very awesome. <laughs> I, I know. It's like, um, it's an awesome. Well, I mean, I was thinking, oh, actually, this is a question that I had was that like, I was thinking it's, it's an awesome idea to like uh, offer stipends for people to participate. So I wasn't sure if it's, um, if it's it, like a bad idea to kind of like pigeonhole the funding that way. Um, it's, it's only a thousand dollars. So I imagine we can find a way to use it pretty easily. So I, I, I figured that's how I would pitch it to them, but I wanted to run that by you all. I love that idea. Okay. I'm not, I'm not really your voting member here, but I think that's a really <laughs> cool idea. You know, that's something that the city's really going to have a hard time budgeting for. And that's where support would really be. Um, um, I would broaden it and not, not just make it stipends because that might um, drive them away, but just to say we, when you talked about it the last time, you said trying to remove barriers to participation and you included stipends, child care, food, whatever. And I think uh, if, you can, if you can put it in removing barriers, that might make it more awesome. Okay. That's a good <laughs> idea. I will. <laughs> I have a question. Um, th is this fundraising to support the work that is under the purview of creative discourse? Yeah, to support their work, like facilitating this project. Yeah. Uh, so that and the history is that we so we get, we issued an RFP. The city uh, okayed ten thousand dollars this year mm -hmm. and hopefully ten thousand dollars next year. Um, that uh, we put out an RFP. They came back with one for fifty-two thousand dollars. That would be a two-year process, and so um, it's important that we finish that process. That we not so we have we basically have enough money to start that process, yeah. but we need to finish it. And so, so um, a lot of the, what we're hoping to do is fund the beyond ten thousand dollars that we mm -hmm. have now. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, the other I heard I was listening to a podcast today, and the there was a. I didn't write anything down because I was out walking, but there was a Casey Foundation that was like a new Casey Foundation. I haven't normally heard advertised on, on podcasts. It's like, there's not the Annie E. Casey Foundation. It's like a new one. And it was all about like civic engagement. And like, I, so I haven't looked into it at all. I just heard, heard the advertisement today. And I think it was like caseyfoundation.org or something like that. So that's probably worth looking into um, if anybody has the... Yeah, Marguerite Casey Foundation for Social and Economic Justice. There you yes. go. Well done. Hey. Right on point. Interesting. I'll send a, I'll put, I'll put a link in the chat.
Okay, cool. Um, and then Julia and Cameron, do you just want to share your thank you notes? I don't know. <laughs> this is on our agenda. <laughs> I wrote two thank you notes <laughs> to Michael. The other one was to your dad. <laughs> I don't know if they've arrived yet. I think I sent them on Thursday. Michael, thank did you, you get a thank you note yet? What? I was just going to ask if he had gotten his yet. I haven't talked to him. Yeah. Okay. My dad donated. That was one of the. That's really sweet. <laughs> yeah. It's really sweet. Okay. Um. And then I need to get on for getting the money out of my PayPal account. So I will, I will do that. Um, all right. And then the, the last like big thing on our agenda here is the creative discourse work plan update, which just um, Keisha had sent just kind of right after our last meeting. So I just wanted to, I think we just want to check in on that. I don't know if there's anything else like significant. Um, to share. So that was on the attachment of the email that I had sent earlier today. Um, I, yeah, I guess, what are our goals of going over this section? I'm not sure um, if there was anything in particular that we wanted to talk about. So, and Lisa, if you're talking, we can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was like looking at my phone, looking for the attachment, that's all. Oh, sorry, yeah. I can, yeah, we can share a screen, but I'm, I'm worried well, that'll mess us up. I think, you know, listening to y'all's conversation last time and the changes that she made, it feels like it adopted a lot of those. Um, she didn't make a note where they changed, but I think it adopted a lot of what you talked about last time, but especially with the timeline, a little bit more realistic. I mean, I guess it's just, we also have other things besides outreach on the list of what we're responsible for here. So of creating flyers and social media messages, you know, reaching out to community partners who can help spread the word as well as the list of people to invite and, and starting to have these conversations of identifying people in CJAC um, or trusted community members to extend invitations to. Um, and then I am, I'm, thinking we're not going to start the survey conversation until we check back in, right? Okay, great. Um, so um, I think, yeah, so go ahead. Sorry, I hate interrupting. Zoom, this it's is the worst. Inevitable. I apologize. Um, I really wanted to sort of under, reiterate my understanding of the survey timeline, just so I'm on the same page as y'all. They wanted to talk to some of our focus groups first so that they could form with the question you're nodding okay I'm getting it all right thank you also uh certainly it says CJAC is responsible for things like flyers and social media but that's something that the city staff is totally able to help with it's not you're on your own on that one So, yeah, would we want to do that broad outreach of saying like sign up for our, our get on our list <laughs> with all the problems that's come with that? Um, and if you're part, if you're like want a member of these communities, and maybe like I, I really have not thought this through, and I'm sorry, I'm the cure, and so I just get to talk until someone tells me to shut up. <laughs> but of um, if they're like, should we put like check boxes on the like newsletter list of being like, I am a member of like these communities, you know, like of, um, or is that, does that get into weird sticky areas if you're asking people to disclose if they have a disability or if they're. I mean, as long as it's not community. required. Yeah. Yeah. You mean when they sign up for the mailing list? Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it should be more like, we're looking for folks like email us if you want to be part of this conversation you know so there's That's a little a bit more right. a little less like we're gonna give we'll invite you if you give us this information and it's a little right. bit more like hey like we really want you to be part of the conversation especially people who are you know I, I mean and I think listing out um some examples of the of the areas in which we're recruiting like organizations and uh folks from marginalized populations and 
again, that list is not at the top of my head, but like, I think maybe sh sharing that with people and saying, if you are, if you are a member of any of these groups, we really want to make sure that we're contacting you. Or if you have suggestions about folks we should reach out to, um, please let us know. Yeah, I, I agree. I think once we have um, clarification from the CD about the, the names or the, or the, the identifying the 10 and if there may be going to be more groups, then we can, we, we, in a, a newsletter, you can say, here are the 10 groups that we have, def that we're working with. If you are interested in one or another of those, let us know, or you can put a checkbox next to each one and say, you know, check those that might interest you or you would be appropriate for. So then they can just sort of respond to that um, as part of the plan. Do you know, um, do you know if Creative Discourse will be doing any kind of kind of pre focus group pre interview screening of the participant list? I think it's more like that's what they're asking us to do a little bit. Like, I don't know that they're doing any. I don't I, I don't know that they have. To, I don't it doesn't to me seem like they've got time built in okay. to do that. It's more, I think they're sort of, and they haven't really given us um, criteria necessarily other than the like categories of groups. Um, yeah. But do, am I misremembering that I thought they, at one point, somebody said that they had connections too and that they would be looking around for people in our community that they might know. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess I was the more thing it'd be like, they would reach out to the person they know and we'd be like, okay, and here's our list of people to participate. And they'd be like, do you feel comfortable and safe to be able to have like a real conversation with these other people? And, you know, like that level of screening, but not like a Googling. I no, I, yeah. yeah, let me ex also explain no, what I mean. Really good um, so when, when I do um, research interviews, which is a big part of my work, you know, we'll put out a, a more general call for people who might be interested in participating in research interviews or workshops. Um, and then we might do a, a kind of screening with folks that could be like a 15 minute conversation just to make sure we're getting the right people in the room. Um, and I didn't know if that was part of creative discourses process when they do these kinds of research activities. but. Definitely, you don't think they're going for statistical, uh, at, like, greatness here. I think it's just trying yeah. to get people in the room to have frank conversations. So, probably not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Julian, I can check in with them when we connect. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I think. Okay. Let me explain my reason for wanting to know that is how specific do we make our call for participation um, so that, because I think some people might say, well, that's not me or that's not me, or they don't want to self-identify in a particular way. Right. Um, and so what are the, what's the kind of least amount of effort we can put on people to kind of express a willingness to participate in this kind of activity um, versus just being more kind of defined and making sure we check off each individual box within those 10 categories. Um, so I'm, yeah. just, I'm just trying to understand that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll check in on that. Um, but so do we want to start making like social media or other like outreach materials or, you know, does someone want to commit to posting on front porch forum this week or um, something like that just to continue to to do that broad outreach as well as this deep outreach if you give me stuff to share i will share it wherever you need me to you know i you know i'll create flyers i'll create whatever some i would love to have the the written part doesn't have to be final draft but what you the draft of what you want to say, and I will share it on all of the things. Can the City of Montpelier Facebook page share our? Um, yeah, 
can we do that? That mm -hmm. that would be good. And all of our other associated pages, if they if they want to. Yep. Okay. And at this point, we're just saying, hey, these are coming. If you're interested, mm -hmm. let us like get in touch with us. Right? We're not because that's all we. They're coming in January ish, right? Well, they said December, but probably. Oh, December. But, um, but they'll probably was, start in December, right? Or, yeah. I think they wanted to get started in December, recognizing that there would be a long pause for the holidays and then pick it up again in January. Right. But the plan is to be done with those in February. Right. Okay. I cool. do see on the work plan that. Um, under focus groups, there is a, a bullet for distributing stipends. Um, stipends are available for participants. That's on us. So we, we do have some that's, donations okay. to be able to cover. That's, that's what, yeah, part that we're responsible for. We, we have, yeah, some individual contributions to be able to cover some folks so far. And, um, and then Montpelier Live has committed to getting some like gift cards and stuff. For um, for participants as needed, mm -hmm. um, as well. You know, we haven't talked about the specifics of it yet, but yeah. the general commitment is there. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You know, supporting local businesses and all the feel good things and important things. Sorry, this is all. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Okay. Other business, Michael. Do you want to share about? Oh. Julia, were you going to say something? Did we identify somebody to do a to do a from porch firm post at this point, or flyers, or anything like that? I think Cameron said that she could post on from porch okay. forum and on Facebook. Um, yeah, I didn't, Facebook. I, I, I was thinking you were wanting us to send you something to post, but you're willing to write it up. Um, it up. that's fine. Shayna, if you want dust verbal vomit on an email, and I will uh, get it out there. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better than verbal vomit. But you know what I mean. I'm you, sorry. You know, <laughs> like sometimes that's what's going to come out. <laughs> it's been a week. Okay. I mean that in the um, best possible way. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> um, okay. So then, Michael, do you want to share a little bit about the police commission and then have Julia share about the school meeting and anything else, other business report back stuff? Um, Maybe Lauren, City Council, just update too, if that's okay. Put you okay. on the spot. Great. Okay, Michael, go. Yeah. So um, you can find this. There's an article about this um, in uh, Vermont Digger. Um, or no, Times Argus. Um, it was November 3rd was the, was the, the report. Um, the city appointed two members of the council, Lauren and Jack McCullough, um, and then six of the people who applied, um, there was some discussion about how large in the, in the open part, about how large the, the committee should be. They couldn't, they couldn't make a decision on that. And when they went into executive session, they uh, selected um, one, two, three, four, five, five of us, uh, me, Jen Duggan, Alyssa Shuren, Dan Towell, and who's the, there's another guy. Um, what's his name? Um, we haven't, obviously have not met yet. <laughs> um, oh, and Cameron, you're muted. It's, sorry, it's Daniel Towell. Toll. Toll, all right. I think it's Toll. Toll, right. Um, and um, then, the, then the, we have 60 days to go back to the council and suggest um, either to, to expand the number and to um, give some idea of what, what criteria we, the council should use in trying to get any unrepresented groups or um, uh, backgrounds that would be of help. So. Um, we'll hear soon from, I guess, the, 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 the city manager staff about when, when they we're going to convene for the first time. 
Um, and once we, that happens, we'll, I guess our discussions will initially be um, how, much, how much larger should the committee be and who's missing. Um, and the rest, as for the rest of it, I don't know if you saw the advertisement that, was, that the city put out, um, which gave the six areas that the, the committee is supposed to be looking at. I could circulate this to you if you haven't already seen it, um, and I'll do that. Um, and I'm just now, you know, uh, I have the police chief's preliminary report um, based on his on his first, you know, his first couple months, his initial organization assessment and strategic plan, which he published in August, and I've read through that a couple of times, um, and I've read through the the, the report of the president's commission. Um, on policing the new era of public safety, and I've been collecting articles and reading, reading and collecting articles on policing and um, the history of police. And we'll see. I mean, I think everybody who was we briefly all briefly had two minutes to introduce each other ourselves, and it sounds to me like it's a it's, it's a group of, of people who are well informed and sort of focused on some of the some of the questions that are. Uh, we are supposed to address in this charge. That's all I can tell you at this point because we haven't, you know, we haven't met yet. Thanks. And I did just find it. Sorry, I had not read it yet. So much going on. Um, Julia, do you want to share about the SRO? Comment? Yeah, what would be helpful to share? I don't know what, <laughs> um, what, it, what it was because <laughs> yeah, no. this is the one that's intersecting with that's the creative discourse is doing right yeah okay. so yeah. um I I left early so I could come here I was <laughs> splitting splitting the difference a little um but so they started with some group agreements it's it's a big group there's 14 people on the committee and then there were like uh a handful I would say five between five and ten um guest members of the public. Um, Sue and Keisha didn't, I thought did a nice job of like including members of the public. It wasn't one of, it wasn't a typical school board meeting where you can talk at the beginning and then you have to just watch the rest of the time. It was um, more participatory than that. Um, they talked about, um, I think one of the things that they're hoping to do, one of the biggest things they're hoping to do is identify some shared values around um, safety and uh, justice in the schools. Um, uh, the, the uh, I don't know how much you want me to editorialize, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they 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 talked about some group agreements. They talked about they were they were asking people. I left right as they were breaking out into breakout groups to ask people to share like a little bit more sort of individual or in like on a more personal level, their, their experiences. Um, yeah. Thanks. And Lauren, do you want to just share like a city council update? <laughs> it's just, we haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, if there's just anything you want to share. Um, no, I mean, I think of most relevance to this group, um, I mean, obviously the police committee, Michael described really well. Um, I mean, I think the other thing that could be important for this group is, you know, we're looking at a massive budget shortfall, um, like $1.7 million of our $14 million budget or something. So in both in terms of how that conversation goes in terms of what the city is setting as priorities and what is gonna be on the chopping block, um, you know, how equity and the values of this committee get rolled into that, I think, I mean, that's a, that's a statement of our city values is what we fund. Um, so I would just hope and, you know, I think, I don't know, Cameron would have more details on like when we'll start seeing like different scenarios and what we would get and, you know, I mean, I, the conversation so far you know it's going to be this like balance of not wanting to raise people's taxes too much when 
they are struggling right now, but then what services do we cut and what's the right balance there? So anyway, I would love some conversation of this group of, um, you know, what's, what's at risk or what are the different things or what would we want to maybe push for some things to, you know, obviously there's our own like project um, budget, but there, I think it's broader than that. Yeah. So that's the big thing I see coming up. Don't have an exact timeline. We're aiming for our budget uh, meetings to start into December. Um, so we're having our internal uh, uh, budget meetings um, in a couple weeks. Uh, we're working on it now. We're just going to hash it out um, to a more final presentation for council in a couple weeks. Um, so I'll have more information then. I don't have any other insight other than Lauren just shared, other than it is a really rough year. We're facing almost a $2 million deficit going into the next fiscal year. Yeah, I almost want to yeah, name, I, I don't know if the next meeting is, like I don't, yeah, of, of doing some sort of, um, you know, exercise as a committee to just like think through um, how we want to bring this to city council and and to our community and or how to how to have these conversations um, to to you know not <laughs> come up with like a proposal. Here's the policy that should we should be it should look like, but of um, potentially like what values or or align how to align um, our values into that process. Um, could be cool. Should we do that? Should we plan on doing that at our next meeting, um, November nineteenth? Because does that make sense to you know start this maybe before the the actual nuts and bolts get discussed? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think through what that facilitation would actually look like. But if anyone has any ideas, I would love to <laughs> hear Dana, them. Um with the caveat that I'm very new and I don't know anything, <laughs> um, I could, I'd be happy to work with you to talk through how that conversation might unfold and what facilitation of it might look like. I would love that, Jeremy. Thank you so much. I often think the very new people are the, the those are the ones who are like least, you're least like uh, <laughs> documented in our system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to bring my ignorance to the table. Excellent, thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> which we're all in the dark. <laughs> but I think the, uh, the Lauren's suggestion that we look beyond our own project um, is is important and powerful um, because that, um, I, I think that that's what the city really wants. What meant for this committee to be. Um, advisory and not and, and not just sort of um, you know waving our own flag, but really trying to sort of help them out with some direction to go. And we have no, we'll have more, of course, once we get started with this. But I think if anything that we can bring to the table at this point is useful. I also think you know. Um, like you said, I just want to underscore the way you said, Shana, about like uh, sort of um, helping, I think our role to some extent too, rather than saying, you know, I don't think we are going to get to a point where we can make recommendations of what budgets, should, how the budget should look, but just to really help city council members uh, remember their values and act on them and, you know, can kind of keep it at that, at that level. Um, and if we can find a way to communicate that well with them, that would be, and support them and, and, and support and support them if we can with community voices so that, so that they're, they're backed up on those values. When would, when would the, when would it be most important, uh, Cameron, for us to be able to pass along information that we've gathered. I mean, how long can we wait before we're out of the out of the realm of, you know, out of the discussion? Uh, well, you're not out of the discussion until it all goes to vote, right? So, but I would recommend if you want to bring this to city staff's attention and council's attention, 
sooner rather than later. We have our budget hearings, um, not the next meeting, but the following meeting. So the first meeting in December, we're going to start getting into the budget. Um, so probably the first meeting in December would be when I recommend coming to council. Yeah, we won't have any results from the, the focus groups by that point, which is unfortunate. But. No, but I, th you know, you've done a lot and you can talk about, you know, the value add and, um, you know, the commitment that council made. No prom there's, I mean, no promises from anybody on anything, but I, I think that would be important and powerful. So, yeah, so it sounds like our homework for our next meeting is, um, yeah, Jeremy and I will discuss this this facilitation. We'll all be doing our outreach conversations and postings, um, and emailing um, the any you know committed committed yeses to get on the list. Um, we'll do our fundraising work, either individual or grant writing or research or any whatever the fundraising work that we've got uh, committed. We, I'll send out the newsletter. Um, we'll all have a conversation with Jeremy. It'll be such a great, <laughs> yeah, check in. Um, and then Julia and I are having a conversation with Keisha. Um, anything else for like next steps here? Okay, and then um, on our next agenda, we'll start off as we normally do, you know, all the intros and agendas and everything else. And then it looks like how to bring our committee values to the budget and city council conversations, conversation. It's a little meta, have a conversation about a conversation about a conversation. Um, and then we'll do the outreach check-in and fundraising check-in. And I think those are really it because um, it'll all be kind of related to, to these focus groups that are coming up. Yeah, Lauren. One, one thought, um... I don't know how easy it would be, Cameron, for you, or I could dig around. I'm thinking um, for anyone who has capacity to watch the chunk of the council discussion about budget, mm -hmm. the meeting that we had um, this week, was it just last night? Um, yeah. <laughs> of, like the, everybody was just kind of sharing their perspective on, you know, how do we deal with this really unprecedented, ma massive budget cut? And it might just be instructive as we try to think about how do we engage council productively um, just to see where people's starting points are um, for anyone who's able to watch that it was probably a I don't know 20 minute discussion or something Maybe yeah something. orca wasn't actually there last night because the because of our schedule change they were at oh, the school board so recorded? it's no it's recorded I recorded it on our oh, zoom okay. so I have a link I've got to make it public so I will that was on my list today did not get checked off so um, I will have that on our social media and I'll make sure to email it to y'all um, tomorrow. Cool. Do, you have a, do you have a sense of what time in the meeting that was? Oh, we, we went pretty quick through the meeting yesterday. So probably right after an hour, I would say. Yeah, it was the last budget or the last item. So probably if you go to like the last half hour or something, you'd find it. Yeah, it was not a long one last night for, for the first time in a while. <laughs> for once. <laughs> Well, yeah, and if, if you want to, I can figure out where it is and then send out that time with the notes or um, not with the notes because I don't really take notes with the next steps. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Yeah, Pelham, Lisa, Jeremy. All right. Well, thank you guys all so much. Um, my roommate made some really delicious smelling food and I'm very eager to go pick the pan. Um, so yeah. Guys, we can we can get through these next couple of days. <laughs> I'm telling this for myself, deep breaths. <laughs> but okay, great to see you all. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bye.